competition, but here we go. Pittsburgh in a fourth. Edward Kiza up front. Kiza is the star to watch for the Panthers. He's got 31 career goals in 53 ACC games. And super, super fast. In his childhood days in Uganda, he played pickup ball from Saturday on Wednesdays at a field, and that's when he realized, you know what? I'm a striker. And you know what, Evan? He's right. Andrew Pannenberg starts in goal for Wake Forest, the redshirt junior who played most of the season last year. And yeah, Pannenberg was on a really miserable rainy Friday night last November. And that's an understatement because, remember, it was about eh, 37 degrees, <laughs> too. I was there, Ty. You don't have to <laughs> tell me. It was frigid. And I was thankful to have a roof under my head or over my head as I watched the game. What are you expecting from this one tonight? We, we obviously talked to both coaches a few days ago, and you know they're going to tinker and experiment. What, what are you interested in seeing most tonight? Uh, the one main spot. But going back to Jose, I mean, we watched that scrimmage a week ago, and there I see Jose making runs up and down the sideline. I had to check and see who exactly. Coach Vidovich is just trying to keep that possession and then look for the through ball, look for the speed of Kiza to bust through the back line. Of course, he will have some problems with the stalwart back there, Michael DeShield. And Pittsburgh has more international players than Americans on the roster. 13 total? <laughs> I thought that was a miss. I think 13 I think total. It, yeah, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> and a bunch in the starting lineup. Just in the starting lineup, you have players from Spain, Germany, France, Uganda, Serbia, Switzerland. There's a couple of Brazilians on the roster as well, not starting tonight. And, and Ty, it's actually 18 of the 30 Panthers. And that's far more than <laughs> the past couple of years, but Jay Vidovich has come to realize you got to think outside the box and find the kids that are hungry that don't get a chance to play in Europe. And obviously the Pitt program has a lot to sell. It's done over the past several seasons. It's almost impossible to fathom how much this program has improved. The competition since joining the league in 2013. Four wins, 40 losses. And then last year they go 4-3-1 and one in ACC play, 10-8-2 and two overall. Pittsburgh went to the NCAA tournament last year and won a tournament game for the first time since 1965. And then lost in that second round to the champion, That's Georgetown, 5-0. Right. But, yeah, that exciting win. Station and hierarchy. Pittsburgh has never beaten Wake Forest. They've never scored a goal in four games against Wake Forest. So, Ty, that takes us into the philosophical question of the night. If the Panthers score a goal in an exhibition game, does it actually count? In the future, <laughs> will we say they have scored against Wake Forest or will they next face the Demon Deacons still scoreless in the all-time series? Well, I'll guarantee you that Bobby Muse will remember that. He'll put it as a regular season. It's you. You're the guy. And he said, I welcome it. Back to Pannenberg with a little sauce on it. He had to <laughs> play it quickly with the incoming Pittsburgh four-checker. We can use that hockey term in <laughs> soccer, can't we? <laughs> you can. Especially when the hockey playoffs are still going on here <laughs> in mid-September. How about today? Such yeah. a bizarre sports just time, right? Just like Thursday, you had you know, NBA playoffs, NHL playoffs, obviously week one NFL. There's baseball going on. The U.S. Open he brings recruits in. He sells, sells the program. And that flip, even though that first year he was there, only two wins, everybody in the ACC knew that wasn't going to last long. And look at what they did last year. It's just going to continue to move upward. And obviously Jay you know, could have been the coach at Wake Forest today if he had chosen to be. He was not ushered out of Winston-Salem by any means. Kiza 
Touches it to the middle. Takes off, and it's a great ball to send him. Edward Kiza, first team all ACC each of the past two years, and it was deflected. And a great opportunity there for Pittsburgh, but it rolls wide of Andrew Pannenberg's goal. And Pannenberg read it right. He knew exactly where to dive, but that deflection would have been in the back of the net. See where Pannenberg moving to the whew, got close to maybe getting in the back of the net. Oh, and they all bring different things to the table. Some of the saves they make in training are breathtaking. Little drop back pass. Oh, what a save. Pannenberg denies the rebound. Third try. Not the charm for the Panthers. What a sequence. Pannenberg picking up where he left off last year. Just comes in big. Uses his chest as a weapon. Such a phenomenal goalkeeper. Look at that. First leg with the knee, knee back. Then just kind of laying out. Hoping he uses torso to somewhat block it. A little bit of luck too, but... Something you don't usually see here at Spry. Kiza gets ahead on Pekovic's corner. It will be a goal kick. Some spunk here from Pitt after Wake had controlled for much of the first 15 minutes. You know, Evan, with corner kick, sometimes it's overlooked because it's a set piece. You're right there at the touchline. A perfect opportunity to execute. And you go back to 2,000 in the corner's goals. Uh, Pittsburgh last season took more shots than all schools in the league except one. I believe Clemson was number one in that category. They led the nation in offense. Yes, they were uh, pretty good on the offense side, about uh, three-plus goals a game. They only scored two here Versus Spry, versus uh, Wake Forest at Spry. That was a wild game last year, Wake and Clemson back and forth, and obviously the Deeks open their 2020 regular season this Friday at Clemson. Bobby Muse basically said it, it's going to be a challenge, but that's why you come to Wake Forest, to play the best teams. He said Clemson, Virginia, and Georgetown, in his opinion, were the three best teams in the country last year. Georgetown beating Virginia in the finals, and I believe Clemson... Knocked out in uh, the quarters. And Clemson's 2018 year was a down year because they didn't even get to the tournament. So a lot of publications overlooked them. And then they just jumped out of the gate offensively. Just Both story programs. Though. Oh, yes, by far. We knew that Bobby's favorite club was Liverpool. So I asked Jay Vitovich. A question I had never asked him before. What's your favorite team? And he said for the most part, he just roots for great soccer, great football, as he said. So he appreciates Liverpool and Manchester United and all the great clubs of Europe. And then he mentioned a, a small program in Brazil that he uh, grew fond of during his childhood when he lived in Brazil for four or five years which we had no idea. Chartered waters right now when it comes to college soccer. But the fact that we're watching it is an awesome <laughs> first step. Right now, both these programs thinking about getting better for the... Because of a tournament at Duke back with 99. And Jay Vidovich was impressed by what Bobby Muse did as a volunteer assistant. Have you ever heard that? And then the next year, they go up to play UConn. Yep. And it was even more impressed by the way he kind of held up with that a tournament there. And there was a cool connection. Just has a nose for I mean, knowing where the ball, where it's going to fly off the foot. In the open, Boston College opting out of the men's soccer season. So 11 ACC schools. The Pittsburgh athletic director reached out to Ron Wellman, who was then the longtime AD at Wake. And Wellman is basically the guy that Scott Barnes said hired Vitovich at Pitt because... Play it again next year. I should. Year. I should. Because it seems to be the guy. Well, they say they don't rebuild, they reload.
and I know you were giving me somewhat grief about uh, my all ACC watch list and why I would think Wake Forest be a little upset by the only one selection with Michael DeShields. The other one I would have to say is the team MVP from last antithetical to try and go 100% in an exhibition game after something like that happened. Pittsburgh looking for its first score. Bertin Jackson saved by McNally. And Bertin goes right to the byline. Usually you want to kind of put that up in the air. You focus right at the six. Had Kiza there as an option. But overall, good idea, good thought process. To lead back where they need to be. McNally gets a piece of it. Pittsburgh wanted a handball. No whistle. Kiza, I believe it was a half volley. He said, all I need is one touch in the box, and I'll put it on frame. There was a good example right there. Because watch this. The deflection, no, that's full volley. Then off off the turf. Is that it? Did you have a reputation for handballs? No, I tried to keep my hands out. I'm not too big, so I can keep my hands out. <laughs> and oh, Kiza, look out. Touches it to Pekovic. McNally just got a piece. Look at McNally jumping up. Look, he just spread out, put out his arms, and so tall, and his wingspan's even you know, huge, just puts pushes the ball outside. Well done. Top-notch goalkeeping by the redshirt. ACC all-third team selection last year. Also a member of the all-freshman team, as Ty mentioned earlier. So they're going to stack outside, then crash. We'll see who goes near. No, they're going to pay her. Back of the net, Kiza. Sorry, Evan. Well-developed, Kiza made the right run. He timed it just perfectly. I thought they were immediately going to crash. One go near, one go far, one kind of back up. Just timed it right when the ball was played and put it in the back of the net. And McNally had no chance at that one. Great. Play by Kiza as he scores the goal. 65th minute of action to bring Pittsburgh within one. You know, he was at the Carlisle High School right there in Roanoke before he. And I'll get to that in just a second. We watched this goal. Kiza just beautifully timed, redirects the ball. Puts it right to the right. Cole McNally. In starts last year, he had three shutouts. Now, the Panthers trailing by one. Scored in a corner not long ago. That's off the post and in. A flick on and just somehow hit that woodwork and snuck in. Now we have a whole new ball game, 2-2. Goodness gracious. Alexander Dexter. A perfect redirect and two corner kicks have gotten Pittsburgh level. Yeah, Cole McNally just kind of has to watch that. Watch that flick immediately to the opposite post. And Wake Forest is shocked and IQ and then skill set to create things and dangerous scoring up op opportunities. And while Wake has some 17 and 18 year old freshmen, Oscar Sears is a. Markovic, freshman from Belgrade, Serbia. A little rollover, quick, quick touching. Getting the ball through two Wake Forest players. All things considered, Ty, when you factor in the uncertainty of the season, the up and down nature of training the past several months and even the recent weeks. The injury to DeShields, the number of freshmen that we've seen, it's been a fairly high level of play, I, I've thought, tonight. 
Yeah, I think there's a bit of that rivalry too. Uh, both Coach Vidovich and Bob. And on one side or the left side, he seems always to be on the attacker. Pittsburgh trailing by one. And that will roll harmlessly up into the middle of the pitch and takes a shot at it. 